when we talked about what is the vision and national service, I think it is not, it does not begin or should not begin at the high school level. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to go to the primary school level. Leveraging and launching our creative industries in That's the country. That's mixed reviews. Well, I think, I think what got <laughs> mixed reviews is not the, con the concept, but the labeling. What we do today will affect those coming after us. Police on the hunt for the vandals who ripped through the new airport gateway. I don't know whether the person acted alone. A closer look at the Constitutional Commission's recommendations on gaming laws. The politicians have been a bit disingenuous. An update on Valley Boys group leader Winston Gus Cooper's health. Plus, a woman celebrates her 107th birthday. How do you feel being 107? <laughs> Good. I'm Nakia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. everyone thanks for joining us this Sunday for NB12 weekend we now have an idea of the cost of damage done to a portion of newly paved road at John F Kennedy Drive on Friday last night NB12 exclusively brought you the story that the airport gateway project was vandalized well police are now shedding some light on the incident releasing preliminary findings of their investigation detectives say they're confident they will find whoever's responsible soon We're trying to uh, determine motive, uh, who would have motive to, to want to cause this amount of damage. And that damage amounts to about $1.5 million. According to Superintendent Paul Roll, the road was just paved one week before someone used a Caterpillar DA tractor to rip through 8,700 feet of road. That's about 1.6 miles between Lakeview Cemetery and the entrance of West Ridge. The machine was ditched in bushes on the lake shore. But who would do such a thing? Roll said police still don't know. However, they're not ruling out people working on the airport gateway project. Let's put it like this. In order for someone to be able to get on that machine and to, to, to drive it straight without causing damage to the side, rails and all of that, that person has to know how to operate the machine. So that's the starting point for us. I would believe that those machines uh, have keys or some codes. I don't know how they start them. Okay, but we, we, we are going to be looking into all of that along with the engineers and they have to explain to us those same questions. Another red flag for investigators is the time that the incident reportedly occurred. Police are reporting that the damage was done between 8.30 and 9 Friday night. That's a normal thing for, for me during that time in the evening to, to see people are waking. Uh, but it didn't really cause any suspicion. I think this is why whoever did it seem to be quite familiar with the process that is uh, that goes on there and they, they do it not late into the night but at a time when usually wakers are, are out there. Yesterday Ministry of Works Permanent Secretary Colin Higgs told us that the incident would be a major setback in terms of cost but not so much in terms of time however he said the contractors insurance could absorb that cost. Today, Higgs told our news team that he expects road repaving to start as soon as possible so that workers are not further delayed by bad weather. Detectives are also investigating a possible connection between two incidents in Yellow Elder that Roll called unusual. Police are concerned about two early morning shootings that occurred just days apart with almost identical MOs. The latest incident was a double shooting at Lightbourne Street around 2.23 this morning. A 33-year-old man and 28-year-old woman were shot in their homes while sleeping. Culprit uh, went to the residence and discharged a weapon into the, the home through the, the window, shooting both of them in the leg. 
Their injuries are not life-threatening, but Rowe says the incident is serious, especially since there was a similar incident just around the corner at Celery Street early Friday morning. A man was shot several times while in bed with his wife. We are going to be uh, putting some boots on the ground in that area, more boots to try and bring this to head before it gets any, goes any further. It's, there seem to be some, some, uh, something going on. It's unusual for people to just be shooting up one another within the community like that. Now, Superintendent Roll is appealing to members of the public to cooperate with police and come forward with any information. Well, days later, the report of the Constitutional Commission is still a hot topic. At the release of the report last week, it was the lack of a recommendation on the controversial issue of legalized gambling that garnered a lot of public reaction. Commission Chairman Sean McQueenie announced that the group didn't feel the need to make any constitutional changes to allow or prohibit casino gambling for Bahamians because the current laws are not restricted by the Constitution. He further explained to NB12 that he believed politicians were trying to pass the buck. The complaint out there is that Bahamians are not allowed to gamble. Um, and uh, we think that the politicians have been a bit disingenuous by treating this as a constitutional issue. I think this is their way of passing the buck. And basically, we've lobbed the ball back. and said, look, this is a simple problem. This is not a complicated problem. Section 50 of the Lodges and Gaming Act is the section that contains the restriction. If you think Bahamians should be allowed to gamble, just repeal it. Repeal Section 50. It's a simple matter. It does not require a constitutional amendment. McQueenie said the only restriction that needs to be stipulated in law is that gambling should be prohibited to minors. The commission also believed it would be inappropriate to make a recommendation on the issue considering the recent referendum in which the vast majority of voters voted against the regulation and taxation of web shops and the implementation of a national lottery. McQueenie said the exercise wasn't all for nothing. It means a lot in terms of trying to understand where public sentiment falls on this issue. But I think in terms of the fact that you can get rid of this problem by amending Section 50, you know, the referendum doesn't, there's no referendum involved in that. Meantime, Killarney Member of Parliament Hubert Minnis is calling on the government to immediately address the gaming issue in the wake of the Constitutional Commission's suggestion that gaming laws in the Bahamas actually have nothing to do with the Constitution. And in light of a web shop's attempt to open a location in a residential area in his constituency, Dr. Minnis said something must be done to regulate the industry. Paige McCartney has all the details. Minnis said he doesn't even believe the government will address this gambling issue before it ends its term in office. With an issue that sparked such high public interest, Minnis said the government cannot leave gambling for Bahamians unaddressed. He said either grant the wishes of the public and outlaw the numbers industry and gambling in general, or change the laws on the books so that gaming can be a regulated and taxed industry. The people have spoken, therefore the, gov the government, this was the government elected by the people. And the people spoke, so the government must do whatever is necessary. Um, you can't tr shrug your responsibility on someone else. Mm -hmm. So the government, the government must act. But as it regards those Cable Beach residents who are petitioning to not have a web shop relocated on a residential street corner, the area representative said his constituents have every right to be upset and he will do all in his power to prevent the web shop from opening, even if it means taking the petition to Parliament. As they sign a petition, I will take the petition forward to the government and to Parliament if necessary to ensure that web shop does not spill over within residential area. Individuals have built their homes. That's their dream homes. Suddenly you will have buses taxis and other um, entities pulling up in front of your resident, in front of your homes. Minister said quite simply the government has to deal with a situation that continues to permeate. I don't think a web shop, which is a business entity, should be allowed in residential area mm -hmm. because the problems, you start here with me. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow you're in another residential area and it can be catapulted throughout all the residential area. Now, you have kids who um, ride their bicycles, move about, walk, play within these residential area. Are there any controls to stop these kids from going within these, these web shop 
and thus creating problems later. The Killarney MP doesn't believe web shops should be in any residential areas and raised the issue of crime that can come about as a result of their locations. I don't know how long these places um, remain open. If they're open till 11, 12 o'clock, then it means that you can have all sorts of individuals within your environment and you don't know what the, the ill effect may be. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney.